What's up YouTube? We've got a homebrewed original deck today. A Riven Vi combo or sometimes even OTK deck. I'll start off by explaining the combo to you right away. So we basically have three big hitters in this deck, which is Ballistic Bot, Riven and Vi. It's very easy to grow all of these very huge quickly. Vi, of course, through her passive. Riven, once she's leveled, gets the double attack buffs. And Ballistic Bot, just through Augment, it gets... Like, it's very, very easy to grow this to 10 attack in no time. And the next step is to make sure our big hitters actually connect with the Nexus. And of course, Riven's Blade Fragments are one way of doing so, by giving our units Overwhelm. But the other one is the spicy new addition of Ambush, not only granting bonus damage, but also elusive this round. And we usually won't need it for more than one round, because if the first big hit is not enough to finish the game, then we have Ruined Reckoner being able to give one of those big hitters an extra attack. And to make sure that our big hitters don't die on the first swing, that we have a target for this Midnight Raid card, we can hide the big hitters behind the quick attack from Riven's play charts, but of course also behind survival skills. And to make sure we have enough options of discarding survival skills at the right time, and also to have enough draw in this deck to find our combo pieces consistently, we do play quite a large part of the discard package, like Rummages, Poro Cannon, Zonite Urkin, and Fallen Rider and of course Lost Soul as big, big payoffs, some of the strongest cards of the new expansion. Meaning that even if we don't find our combo quickly, or sometimes we need to outgrind people or out board control people, we have access to tools to doing so. Well, I've basically already explained most of the deck. The last couple of cards are the Squires and Rune Weavers who generate extra blade fragments just to get, have better odds of getting that overwhelm thing, or to have even more ways of buffing the Ballistic Bot, getting it huge very quickly. And of course, get excited as optional, either removal or a finishing tool as burn damage, or just to discard the survival skills to protect your big units. So even though the game plan does sound straightforward, the deck is insanely hard to pilot. I found that out after playing it for a bit because you need to set up your win condition over multiple turns. You need to play towards it. And that even means sometimes that you kind of sacrifice the board, that you don't go for board control anymore, let your opponent hit you. But you need all the, like you keep all the pieces you need to be able to close out the game in time. You also need to be inside your opponent's head a lot, like know what kind of potential answers they could play. Freezes, hushes, mini morph and so on. And you need to be very wary of their mana. How many of these cards they can actually play, how well they can stop your big combo turn or attack. And part of the reason why this deck was so successful for me, like I had a consistent 70-80% win rate even in the European Masters ladder while everyone was tryharding. Part of the reason was that the deck is of course very new, it's a homebrew and people don't really know what's about to hit them. Like these ambush or uh, ruined reckoner double swings mean you can just pump out literally 20 or more nexus damage within one turn and people are not very good at saving enough mana for the right answers for the right resources at the right moment when they should. So I definitely recommend trying this deck out. Don't get frustrated at the very start if you still need to figure it out but it's a lot of fun. It feels very very strong and pretty consistent with the amount of draw we have. Uh, I have some I actually have a lot of good gameplay examples I have. Most of the games were very short because the deck is so explosive. So um, I will showcase a lot of different matchups and how we can approach each matchup differently to find our win condition against exactly that deck. Have fun. Is it the Mustas? Who knows? Oh, rough matchup. Two good keeps. Not in the opener. I'd like to find the skills a bit later though. Wait, wasn't Marcus at like 500 something LP yesterday and made a Twitter post about it and said he wouldn't play anymore? At the cutoff? Might be Ledros and not FTR. I don't know when's the cutoff. Tonight at midnight, which is like six and a half hours. 
I can make that ballistic bot swall. Or I can play Riven. Every country is super close. I need to look up like... Does anyone have a link to some rankings? Should have maybe swung with a squire. Eh, it's not necessary. And Thrawn's best here, right? ThormastersEurope.com, that's true. Forgot that that exists. Oh, we didn't get quick attack yet. Overwhelm is kind of nice though. Now we got quick attack. Could flip Vi instead. I mean, we're flipping her anyway, right? We have a second Vi in hand. I go overwhelm in this one. Juicy attack. What you get for trying to pass in my face on turn 4? Oh, Rind Reckoner this turn, isn't it? Oh my goodness, this is nasty. I sense their power. I won't look back. This sent to ruined Reckoner, and if opponent tries to grasp this, we have survival skills. So flash freeze is the only way for them to survive, but they probably would have used flash freeze last round. Maybe. To stop the Vi from leveling and get a million overwhelm damage. Man, this game was pure domination. GG. OTK threat from one power under 10 attack Vi is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It could, it might be worth as a one-off. Um, I think I like keeping Vi. Good hand. This is probably the best one two in the game right now. Hurricane into Fallen Rider. Are we gonna see you tomorrow in the World's Watch party? Yes, I'm still waiting on an announcement, though. 
I, I just say right away that I'll be talking German tomorrow. I don't think I can say more yet. Discard Rummage, I guess. Poetry stream? Exactly. I'm just gonna be spitting Nietzsche for like 8 hours straight. Attack. Quick attack is great for board control. Probably just using defensive ambush to get rid of Poppy. Well, I could just play this guy actually. This guy kind of perfectly deals with the Sitch. Well, if opponent doesn't attack, we just got Vi to clear up Poppy. How good do you think the deck opponent is playing? As I have tried it myself yet. It's very hard for me to judge that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we use this as discard fodder, not for two damage. As tempting as it may be. I mean, I think I play pass and swing even if opponent passes, because then we got them in, in ambush range. Next ambush should just close out the game anyway. Okay, this is a pass though for sure. That's very good for us. There's a fair chance we just OTK our opponent next round. For the Empire. For the glory of Noxus. <laughs> no swing, that's cute. Ambush, double Vault Breaker, they'd need double defensive fervor. Actually, they have Poke Stick for the bot. Still the same line though, isn't it? Oh, let's go! Let's hit him for 16. That's about as close as uh, to an OTK as you can get. I think that was either a pokey stick or a fervor in hand that opponent realized I still have an ignition and one mana open. Uh, GG. Jungle gap copium. Okay. Will I be casting worlds? Can't say anything yet. This is a matchup I'm curious about. Oh, 
Will I be winning worlds? Oh, right into the fields. Who said he is casting? Let me check Twitter if any announcements were made yet. No. Which EU player am I rooting for? I'm rooting for Alan because of um, we we prep together for the qualifiers, and of course just the streamer connection. Who else is in there? I mean, I I kind of what's the right word? I would um, appreciate it for every one of them, kind of. Right? I think Cosimo has been grinding tournaments for long enough. Same for Badge Attack. Who else is in there? Ragnar, I won't say anything about. And Shihu, of course, has been grinding grassroots forever and tournaments forever. But yeah, I didn't prep with Shihu, I did prep with Alan, so. That's just the difference. Not that I like anyone more specifically. When his world starts tomorrow. I will drive back the darkness. Like, I'll also be super happy if she who wins. So if opponent plays Crescendum, I can not double get excited, okay. But I can build a scary board. Do I just get excited the spark? Uh, we saw two gifts. But as soon as I play get excited, uh, excited spell thief is live. But there's four one cost spells left. None of them are a keep in the opener. Yeah, I think if I don't play get excited now, I'm never uh, catching up with the spark fly anymore. It will just grow infinitely. Well, I could pull it with Quick Attack and ignore Nami, I suppose, but opponent has another Crescendo. I think this is my best shot here, if I want to win this game. There's still much to answer for. Thanks for the whole sweet blood. Hope you had a good, a good one and welcome everyone. We're trying. Ooh, let's go. We got the spark. Okay, I don't care that much about Zoe. Well, Crescent Strike sucks and of course um, Equinox is annoying. Your ship popping off. Yeah, we've been getting some raids and hosts, though. Oh, not going for this? Do you have it? Five mana. Let's go. That's. I'm pretty sure this is a second Nami, but. At least now the buffs are gonna be split between Zoe and Sparklefly, so I can maybe outrace the Sparkle. Right, the lists are currently on zero or one hush, if I'm not mistaken. Why not full swing? Because if Zoe gets one buff, she value trades into the bot, and I really don't want the bot to die. Remember when we had a hump before emotes and you were betting in UPC? That wasn't too long ago. That was like maybe a year ago. What happened to the Atro Tristana deck? I'm glad you asked. Check this out. It's my newest video on YouTube and the games were actually completely amazing. I do think I did end up with a fairly refined version, but it did definitely not feel perfect yet. And the deck is really good. Like, I think we had a 70% win rate or something. Only like, maybe 10 games, but still it felt uh, solid and well-rounded. 
Okay, I can get the blade off the Excite this turn. So my issue is right now my opponent can easily spell Thief get excited, right? So Vi is probably not hitting. Same for Ballistic, but I don't really have a guaranteed hitter besides Riven right now. I almost want Vi to die right here. But get excited, my own Vi seems a bit over the top here. So is it Weaver or is it Rider? Probably Weaver at this point. Wait, but if I do give Blade of the Exile to her this round, she grows to 8. Vault Breaker, Vault Breaker, she grows to 12. I put her to the left. That could be lethal. Oh, it's unlikely though. The issue is, so yeah, I, I'm pretty sure developing is better, but that of course can easily get wrecked by Crescent Strike as well. Seems like a bit of a lose-lose situation right now. Pull Sparkle to the very right on an open attack. Is it open attack? I get two hitters through. Might be it. I have 10 mana. So I go for maximum damage, which is like... Overwhelm here. Buff, buff. Two units go through. Most likely. Eight damage. It could be lethal. I think it's worth going for it. This is a bit of a wild line, but it might pay off. Why don't we give Overwhelm to Vi? Because it's a very easy get excited. Oh, I guess I just top deck survival skills. But I mean, just quick attack kind of does about the same, right? Oh man, I, I didn't real. You're right, like now that we have survival skills in hand, I should probably do it. Even though then Spell Thief plus Hush is still a disaster, but... I mean, it, it doesn't make too much of a difference, to be honest, if we put it on bot or Vi, but... A bit more damage on Vi, I suppose. Move aside, small fry. So that's one more HP because Zoe gets buffed. Afterwards, it gets really hard to save more HP with just spells. A guiding touch, I suppose. Okay, so if opponent had make it rain, I'm almost 100% certain it would have been played. Means we go Vault Breaker here and here into the two open slots. Generated card also makes this kill the Zoe. Actually, don't I just put it here? To beat even another Vigor or Pale? Seems good to me. The thing is, we now have info that most cards would have been played already, right? Opponent had them. GG. That was a tough one. But also a very sweet one. Is 
you not doing courses is a good or a bad thing. No, I'm very willingly taking a break, so it's perfectly fine. Based on that notice on the lethal, I'm sure you're gonna win worlds. <laughs> Man, for that to happen, I would have had to qualify for them first. This this misses Timo. True. Yeah, true. <laughs> It feels like Ryder is a keep because we have six ways of proccing it on turn one. Right? Poro Cannon at Urken. And we have nine one drops in general, basically. Anger list like this without Draven feels weird. And I mean, yeah, to a certain extent. I feel like the list is super synergistic in what it tries to accomplish. Because Draven doesn't really give us additional big hitters, what, whereas Riven definitely does do it. Right, like Draven grows the Ballistic bot, but... The only way to make him into an actual threat and win condition is Ambush or Overwhelm. If we play Draven, we can only run three ambushes, but right here we can play like 12 potential overwhelm generators or something like that. Quick attack. Hmm. Should be worth survival skilling. We can delay it for the Vi, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. Lord Zimba in the mix, what's popping? Just sent right to the replay. I'm sure they kicked someone out of words for you since they already did something similar in the Americas. <laughs> oh my goodness. Funny because it's true. That's so sad. Oh, get excited is spicy because if my opponent doesn't have another cheap lurk unit, they won't lurk this turn. The other straightforward way is just Riven into Vi is more proactive. Kind of like Riven into Vi. Just get excited gets punished pretty hard if my opponent does have more lurkers. Always have Pike here, I suppose you're right. Does that change anything though? Working, I wanted to see some spicy decks here. We're on it here. Vi into quick attack is just great here. Of course, we kind of lose to a Bone Skewer or another Pike. Wasn't Pass better? Maybe Pass was better, you might be right. Endron? Then I can beat Bone Skewer. Hmm. Not really. He lurks. It's tricky because with a Lurk trigger, he goes up to um, to 6 attack, which means he levels. But a lot of people do a misplay here and are gonna Bone Skewer the Vi, and the tough only allows 5 damage to go through. Take the risk. I mean, keeping Get Excited mana open is actually nasty. Ah, oh, this is a tough one. Hey, no Bone Skewer! Easy game. Hmm. 
Okay, still tricky though. I'm probably letting this go through, right, and removing it with Quake Attack, but I don't like going so low on HP. The other line is get excited, discard the Quake Attack block with Vi. And just hope we draw more useful stuff. Opponent draws Rek'Sai. I think we might have to win next turn, right? I think we might just need to find Ambush next turn and then ruin Reckoner. It doesn't seem like opponent has Cure because I think they would have kept the mana open. How much mana do I need? Eight, right? Does bot help at all? Not really. Why not block with Vi? Wait a second and you'll find out. All we need to find is a an ambush and you'll know. This game is so easy. We make him develop first, right? Maybe we should spam some sad emotes. And before Pike, what a two mana. I serve a nobler cause. Never skewer? I mean, we checked for skewer early on. We just identified the win condition, played for that. We had pretty decent odds with the rummage in hand. Not having fought an ambush yet to find one. No, the realistically, I probably won't. The cutoff is like 500 AP, right? Okay, interesting. I like Weaver and Riven. This we want to draw later. This is not that great in this matchup. Much time to make the cut. I think it's tonight. FTR sleeper deck this meta. Yeah, FTR is decent. So many decks are just playing a lot of one HP units, and that's where Whale plus Vile Feast really shines, and then Avalanche's Ravines, of course. I think I like. Hmm. So mana-wise, of course, Riven and then next turn Weaver Ballistic Bot makes more sense, but we kind of got to play the long game here. I think I like Bot into Ignition more. So Bot next turn Riven Ignition. I suppose I could already flip Riven if I went... No, I could not. Well, if I don't play the Bot, then I could maybe flip Riven. Isn't this Endron? It looks way too juicy to not take it. Oh man, next turn if opponent can't deal with Riven, we're popping off. Like we can we can generate two threats, that's a good thing. So opponent needs like vengeance plus flash freeze. I don't need any other card, right? I could click Endrons. Play all of my stuff. 
I have mana for... Oh no, I, I don't quite have... Hmm, tricky, tricky. So I need four mana for Blade of the Exile, two for Ambush. I'm missing one for the Reckoner. But I can put all of the fragments onto this and then the blade on Riven. Then I don't need ambush. I'm not sure if that was worth it. I honestly didn't realize I had melee card, but of course it makes sense. Good thing is if opponent ruinates here, we have four mana left to work with. The other good thing is we have a very scary attack into potential ruined reckoner. Yo, Alan, thank you so much for the big raid. <laughs> I need to pay more attention to my second screen. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, as you might have guessed, we're experimenting around with new decks. Or rather, this idea has been around every now and then in older metas, but trying to make use of the new cards, get a fresh take on it. <laughs> All of the Alan emotes, love it. Maybe I should make uh, some <laughs> some of these epic emotes myself as well. The animated ones are just so much better than the Twitch channel emotes. So now the question is if it's Whale or Grasp. Either way, I think developing Ruined Reckoner pre-combat is really good here. Those are Twitch animated emotes. Aren't they like uh, Franker faces or something? Or whatever the other one's called? So if it's Whale, I win, right? It's Whale, my opponent goes to 20. These two hit Midnight Raid. So I can just play the Squire instead of Ignition. If it's Grasp, I also win. If it's Avalanche, I win. Kind of hard to for my opponent to get out of this. Zero Twitch partner as well. You have five slots for animated emotes. Damn, I didn't know that. All right, I need to step up my, my streamer game for sure. Yeah, th this deck seems like it has some serious potential, but it's really hard to uh, pilot perfectly to like get all the sequencing straight. To always realize what win condition you're playing for right now. But I think this deck has serious potential. Vi is just so good in this meta. She can take care of all of the biggest threats and usually goes like 2 for 1 or 3 for 1, especially with survival skills. <laughs> 